If I ever start, if you ever see me up on stage and stuff and I'm like out here acting like an ass, you, you call me up and be like, bruh, get your shit together. Hi, my name is Helena. I'm here for Enemy and I'm joined by Jaden for the latest in our In Conversation series. Hi, Jaden. Hi, thank you so much for having me. You are welcome. So the most exciting thing happening, your debut album, it's on its way. So we've got to talk about that first. Um, tell me how long you've been working on it. That's a good question. You know, I've wanted to make an album since I got signed um, by Travis and he's known that for a while. And I feel like that that energy has been carried through since the beginning, but we really just started working on it like two months ago, three months ago. Um, so it's been kind of a more recent project for sure. Yeah. And what has been the influences behind it? Why did you start to make it in the first place? So obviously I came out of the bat with like a pretty um, heavily in rock influenced song, you know, Comatose and the Angels and Demons. And I started setting myself up to have this like, uh rock lifestyle but able to do punk rock pop rock active rock be able to do all these different types so um that's really like the goal we had with the singles and i think it just perfectly set myself up for an album just to come up with like a punk rock album um and then kel's dropping tickets to my downfall was just like even more the perfect setup for it so um one it would make no sense to not to do anything uh, other than what we're about to release. I think it's perfect. It fits in everywhere. And then two, it's just like the most fun. Like Rock's coming back and uh, being able to be a new voice on it, not just someone who's already been in it, is really a cool opportunity for me. And like you mentioned there, like punk and stuff like that. Like who influences you musically? And you know, can we hear that in the in the album? I, I, I've been trying to kind of like specify the type of punk to certain types of people because there's actually a lot of artists that are starting to rise up and kind of do this genre, right? And uh, there's so many different sounds. But mine, my, my, the sound that we're giving off is like almost to a T, all time low, mixed with like, you know, this new charm that MGK is bringing to the table. So it's, it's really cool to watch, honestly. Um, the song structures and stuff sound almost exactly like, you know, old 2008 uh, Paramore or, you know, all, all time low. And, but then you add my voice on top of it and it's like, just doesn't sound like old songs did, you know, it's a lot more charming. I feel like, so mm. I'm excited. I think it's going to be awesome. Honestly, it's, it's so fun. Like for me as well, cause I think I'm probably about like 10 years older than you or something. Like it's so fun for me to hear that sound again. Cause like, that's kind of the sound that I grew up with. Yeah, you know Travis's music as well, etc. Like it's so fun to hear that sound again yeah. and hear it in a new way. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. Like, so the, my audience is now, you know, everywhere from the beanie boppers to you know people who are like 40 who are, you know, so long ago listen to punk music and fuck with Travis heav heavily. Now are on my team, so it's just like the coolest feeling in the world. And honestly, like. I don't care what anyone says, punk music is the best music in the world. Like, people just don't get it. Until you get it, you can't get it. So, it's fine. Yeah, 100%. And, like, I've heard you talk about um, previously a very special concert that you went to that yeah. kicked everything off for you. Can you tell us about that? Absolutely. You know, um, a lot of people like to go to concerts, as they should. I think every person should at least go to one in their life. Uh, but, you know, what's funny is I just didn't grow up. Like, I went to a Skillet concert when I was, like, six, but that was the only concert I ever really went to. And so it was this weird, like, you know, dichotomy of, like, being in love with music but never being around it or surrounded by it. So we were in Dallas and after the social media tour, and I saw that Juice sort of was performing the last stop on his tour, and I was like, guys, we got to go. We just got to do it. We all fuck with Juice World. So we did end up going, and it changed my life. Um, you know, the moment, um, something changes is like the most powerful thing I feel like in a person's life, because there's always that one moment that changes it for everybody and no one knows what it is until it happens. And that's how it works. And so that's how it was for me. I had no idea what was going on until like, really, um, uh, like I realized at the concert, how much music mean to me in that moment. But until like two weeks later, when I started putting, getting in the studio, because I couldn't get it off my mind about how much money, like I loved music. Um, that's when I realized, oh, that's the moment it, it changed my life. And so that's the cool, that's like the coolest story ever for me. 
And, and what 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 is it about Juice's music in particular? I think it's his authenticity. Like he's really just not not even is he not scared to be authentic in his music, like with his words and even how he delivers it. But um, he doesn't <clears throat> want to do anything else. You know what I mean? Uh, he he talks about you know if rappers gotta like watch what they say, then like what's the point of it? You know that's like one of the lines. Um, in his in one of his songs, and it's true. Like he just laid out his life so people could connect to him and find a safe place to, you know, sit in, in, in such a hard fucking time. And that's where I was. And that's how I connected to him. And I, I think that's what I'm trying to do with my music with people. Not, I think like, I know that's what I'm trying to do for people. Um, it's very doable. So, you know, it, like hearing you talk about, um, live music and live concerts and like being in this time where like we can't go and see live music like it's really really horrible and really really stressful like what has it been like for you working like in a pandemic creating music in a pandemic has it been different super different i assume because i came into this literally like the week covid started i made one song before covid and Travis signed me literally like two weeks before COVID went full blam. So this is like new for me as well. Um, I will say that I think people have allowed COVID to prevent them from doing things that it shouldn't have. Yes. Like we can't have concerts and we can't um, really be around a bunch of people in person, but that energy, you know, Mm. that is manifested on stage that all of these, you know, artists back in the seventies and eighties and rock bands, Motley Crue, you know, the Guns N' Roses, they had that energy on stage. It came from, you know, the journey beforehand. And that's what this time in COVID is. It was a time for me to make music that I knew people would be like, Oh, like I feel that. Cause we just went through the same thing. You know, it's like the perfect common do- denominator for all people who are listening to music. So I think if it, benefited you you used it the right way you know what i'm saying and if mm. you let it over you let it overtake you you let it overtake you but we my, me and my team decided just to push through it and use this as a, a building block to get to the top you know i suppose also though like you're you're very used to connecting with people virtually anyway like on social media i mean like i feel like you blew up on tiktok kind of before your music blew up even like, no that, definitely i definitely how much did you think least. like TikTok has had like an impact on what you do. It's, it's like one of those things where I couldn't have got here without it. You know, Mm -hmm. um, it's not who I am. Like I'm not a TikToker, definitely not, but it is where I came from and I'm so grateful for it. I mean, I think it's a great platform to get noticed, uh, in the future years, we're going to, I think it's going to be cool and interesting to see the people who rise up from it. Um, and like the actual validity that comes with it. But I just knew I had an opportunity to showcase what I was really about and kind of showcase my authenticity uh, as a human being. And it worked out just as I wanted it to, um, which is a blessing. It's a one in a billion, you know, like this isn't like, I, I talk casually just because, you know, I try to keep my cool about it, but it's like, this doesn't happen. You know, this isn't normal for in any of the sense. So I'm very grateful and very appreciative of what I've been through and what I'm going to go through. Yeah, totally. And also like you're very um, open about everything, about yeah. everything that you've been through. Like we've heard that, um, you know, has TikTok like helped you do that? Do you think it's like, do you think it's easier? Do you think it's a good way to connect? I think that social media should not be used to connect with people like going through like the same struggles as you be- this is why because in music you know people will listen to music oh i connect that i went through a breakup someone died in my family i'm going through this hard time and it sits well with you because it's a song but on social media people there's millions and millions of people who really just like are so sad that they want to hurt your feelings as well that it's just i don't need to go to social media and um like start talking about my, all my problems um because you see all these kids who are getting in so much like trouble you know just be not even real trouble but like all these people are like hating on them so much and they're like feeling so awful about themselves off of normal human things you know but millions of people aren't supposed to like know that you did this thing you know what i'm saying so that's how it works it's just a really weird situation so but i do i am open because i know that i'm strong enough as a person to handle that hate 
the only reason I tell people to keep it offline is because there's a lot of kids that think they're ready for it and they're just not, you know, and it ends up just fucking them up. But yeah, I got to be open. You know, how am I, how am I going to lead millions of people to understand that they're loved if I'm not open and I can't do that. I got to be vulnerable. So yeah, I, I get that's right. Yeah. Do you hope that the people in like your generation can be the ones to talk about mental health more openly? Like, do you feel that shift? Is it happening right now? 100%. 100%. I think that um, there's a lot of cool things happening on the artist side of things. Like I know a lot of artists that are just now using their platform to talk about mental health. And that's a really good thing um, to spread because it's everywhere. You know, it probably every person, you know, has, struggled with some form of depression or definitely anxiety. You know, if someone is, doesn't have anxiety today, that's like rare. I don't yeah. think, I don't think that's a thing. You know what I'm saying? So, um, it's super important. I'm going to do what I can and people should do what they can, but they should never make other people's issues, their issue. You know, you should never get like so emotionally involved in something, um, that it starts to affect your own life. And that's what started to happen. So I think we need to find a better, um, more synergized way to, for everyone to work together and, and ultimately get to that goal of, you know, mental peace and having a lot of freedom. Yeah. Is that a theme on your album? Does that come up? Oh, definitely. 100%. You'll hear me talking about a lot of, in the album, it's really congruent. I talk about um, a lot of the same things, but in so many different ways, you know, um, I have a lot of main core topics, you know, talking about drugs, talking about mental health, talking about breaking up um, with a significant other or feeling like you're not enough, like a bunch of those things. But I tell a different story in each song. It's really fun for me to just be able to make that for people. You know, this is still new to me. Uh, getting to have an album that people will get to sit in and enjoy and relate to is just the coolest thing in the world. So, of course, I got to go all in. You know what I mean? I got to give every, everything I got. Can you tell us um, about any collabs on the album? Who's guest guesting on the album? Because I imagine you've been in the studio with some pretty big names. Yeah, we've we've had some crazy nights for sure. I think that I think that this album is going to be exactly what everyone wants it to be. I think the artists um, that are featuring on this album, um, I don't think it'll surprise people but i think they will be very relieved they'll be like oh fuck yeah you know what i'm saying like yeah. that's it's the people you it's the people you want to hear me making music with i can't say anything else i don't think and if i can then sorry but you know you never <laughs> knows with these type of things but i'm pumped you know I'm, I'm just honored and i'm very grateful for everyone who was a part of the project i mean we've we've got to we've got to talk about travis barker obviously like you're the first signee to his record label what has that been like I tell people this quite often. Imagine you won like the lottery, right? And then you also got the number one accountant in the world to like go with your money and help you, you know, use it and spend it and put it wherever you need to go. That's what, that's exactly what it's like. I got like the best opportunity in the world. I'm out here feeling like Justin Bieber and shit. And I'm like, all right, what's next? And then Travis comes in and he's like, all right, you're good, but I'm like the best. So I'm going to, make sure you become the best and make sure you do everything right. And it's just like the coolest feeling in the world. You know, I've, I've had to, I've loved it even more because I've had to learn, you know, sometimes I get frustrated because I'm like, Travis, I want to do this, like do this shit. Like I want to do this, 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 this. And he's like, nah, bro, just trust me. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, I'm like, all right, whatever. And I'm all like annoyed. And then a week later it's like perfect. And he was 100% right. And I was like, okay, well, fine. You know? So I just, I, I love that man more than anything. And I own my life. Uh, and we're about to take over the world. So I'm, I'm excited. Oh, I mean, you and me both. So like, why do you think <laughs> you and Travis work so well together? It's because we share a common understanding, you know, that we're all human, one. And I think we're both just really trying to make really good music, you know? And really good music has a lot of different factors. But uh, for us, I think it's just mainly being 100% real. Like, I don't... It, it, there's, there's a million different things that could connect us, but when it comes down to it, he's just the realest motherfucker I know. And I will be sure I'm, I'm the realest motherfucker I know. You know, I, I, I don't, I don't cap with anybody. So I think that's where we meet and we're like, all right, let's do this together. You know, and I really appreciate him uh, taking that chance on me uh, because you never know at the beginning, you know, you never really fully know. Um, but he, he definitely made the right choice. Thank God. I'm mean, excited. So Happy for Has it. he taken you like under his wing more than just musically? 
like has he taken you under his wing like personally like is he showing you LA stuff like that yeah he he's this is the best part about Travis is he's a producer he's like my dad he's <laughs> like my best friend and he's like a brother I never had he, he's just everything and um there's nothing more I could ask for him you know uh, he he definitely is my best friend he shows me you know like what car shit I should get in my car what what tattoos I should get I was about to get a fucking like skull hand right here on my neck right like a tattoo yeah and he was like he was like he was like bro no you got to save that space for something better I was like what fuck you (laughs) I was like I'm getting that shit he was like nah bro don't get it I was like all right whatever uh, so he's just on all fronts, man. He's just the best. And I, I like love a him. personal guru. <laughs> yeah, literally like one that I didn't even like know I could ask for, you know, I had no idea that Travis would have ever hit me up and he did. And it was like the best thing that could have ever happened to me. What, what, what is he saying about the, um, about the album? Like when you've both heard it back after it's completely finished, like what have you guys been, been saying about it? Hey, I think, he, we've talked about how he, he thinks people are going to be really, really surprised. Um, Cause this isn't like a small dinky little album, you know, like I, we were going to come out with an EP a while back, but then my label came to me and was like, yo, let's make this an album. Like you've got the fucking power. You like, let's just run this shit. So um, I think we think people are going to be shocked because it's just, it's just so much, you know, in the album and there's so much emotion and there's so much realness and we didn't, we're not like just, throwing shit on the paper, you know, and trying to hope it works. We're really putting time and effort into this. So I'm, I'm excited. Was anything um, particularly hard to make or like, has it all felt really, really like natural and easy and flowing or like, were there any obstacles that you thought like really changed in your learning curve? Yes. I had to be open uh, to understanding that not everything I want is what's needed you know, um, because if I had my way, this song would have 50s. I mean, this album would have 50 songs on it, you know, but that's not one. That's not how album works. <laughs> and like two, I have to try, you know, that's the thing I, I've learned. I have to trust the people above me to make the right decision for me. Um, and that's what I've seen firsthand that the people on my team have got my back. So that, that was like the hardest part for me because I really, really like being in control of everything. Mm-hmm. And while, and while in life, and in the music industry, you do get to be in control of, you know, what you're doing. You still have to trust your authorities. Um, so that, that was probably the, the coolest part for me, learning to be humble and shit, you know. Uh, also, like, making the album congruent is actually pretty interesting because I look at it as not just how they sound, but also what am I talking about, you know. So we look at it from that angle as well. So it's a little more in-depth than just a regular album layout, um, which is really fun. But all in all, it's, it's just been the greatest experience ever. I could, I wouldn't change it for the world. It's been like, it, it sounds like it's been like so fast. Do you ever worry that like a significant, this like significant lifestyle change is going to change you? Oh, no, not at all. Um, mainly because uh, I'm not in this, you know, for the lifestyle, which is really hard to say inside of the lifestyle, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I grew up from a very different perspective. You know, I grew up with not a lot of money. Um, a lot of, not even just that, not even just not having the money, but I grew up with a kind of like a poor mentality in my family. Um, and I got to the point where I, I just told myself, you know, I'm, I'm never going to live like I'm poor again. And so I just started being grateful for everything and started being grateful for the stuff I didn't have. And um, being grateful is the thing that heals all toxicness and all pride and all, uh, anger and selfishness that you know comes from this area if you're if you start being grateful you're like you know what I'm just gonna start being grateful for everything and it goes away so if I ever start if you ever see me up on stage and stuff and I'm like out here acting like an ass you, you call me up and be like bruh get your shit together because that's not that's not what I'm about I'm not about all that shit I don't like I definitely want to I want to rejoice and I want to like be happy about my victories but if I ever turn into like a cocky little ass I just, just take it away from me. I don't want it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. I'll let you know. Yeah. I'll, I'll <laughs> <it together. laughs> yeah. Have you ever had like a moment where um, it, it's been like a, a reality check to you? Like, do you, like maybe if someone f- famous has told you they're a fan of yours or something, do you ever just think like, what on earth is happening? <laughs> yeah. So, so much more than you think. And I'm still not even done. You know, like there's people 
that I'm around that I, I I'll say this. I've never really been like a big fanboy or fangirl over, you know, whoever it may be. Um, but I do appreciate what people do, you know, like I still understand the value of like people's position in like society. So the fact that I'm, I'm around here with like Kells and like, you know, I was working with the same people just to be works with and like same people juice worked with. It's like, this is a dr- something that I would be dreaming if this was like two years ago. So it, it's, it's kind of hard to uh, always be completely aware because like I'm inside of it, but there are so many times where I just like, holy fuck, like what's going on? You know what I'm saying? It's like, why am I like, how did I even get here? Like, what even is this? Um, just quickly, like to go back to TikTok, um, I was meant to say, like, I don't know if you like recently, there's been quite a lot of uh, songwriters and stuff who are saying that they're writing for TikTok. They're writing for to get a catchy hook. Yeah. Um, what do you think about that? And do you ever do that? <laughs> uh, no, I can't say that I do. Not out of like, fuck the people that do that, because that's not what I'm saying. I just think that if, are you reaching a dream or are you reaching a reaction, you know? And it's like, I don't think a one hit wonder song is your dream. You know what I mean? I think you're searching for a big reaction and that's not how you make your dreams. You know, the journey is like small steps. It's small stuff. And there's definitely people that can be overnight. Like, you know, for Justin Bieber, Juice World, Billie Eilish, Sean Mendez, you know, and some people would say even me. And But even in on that journey, I understood that it's not going to happen in one day. I don't want it to. Because usually when it happens in one day, it goes away in the next. Um, so the time put in is, is usually the time that you're going to get out of it um, in a lot of cases. So I, I encourage people not to look for that instant gratification and start building up who you are as an artist, you know, who, who you want to be. Totally. So who do you want to be? Like, what do you see in the future? Cause this is the beginning of something big, right? <laughs> oh, uh, if it's, if it's not, you know, we'll have this conversation in five years. I'm going to be like, yeah, I guess it didn't work out, but that, I, I know that's not the case. <laughs> I know that I'm going to be standing at the top uh, where that is. I, I can I would love to tell you, but I envision myself, you know, I want to be, a Freddie Mercury. I want to be a Michael Jackson. I want to be a Justin Bieber. It doesn't matter who it is. You know, I just want to be who I am. And I want people, uh, I want my life to be exemplary enough for people to model theirs after, you know, um, maybe not like my first 18 years after that, Uh, like my past two years. eh, I don't know. We'll see. But you know, that's, that's my goal. I want people to see me and be like, wow, this man gives us hope. This man, is not only an artist, but you know, he's a fantastic human being. Um, and he loves people and cares about people because that's really all I do. I just, I just love people and that's why I do music. So. Well, I honestly can't wait until, you know, we get to see you touring again hopefully so playing through the debut album. It will be amazing. We'll but- be in the UK. I promise. We'll be there this summer. Hopefully. Um, I mean, they're getting the vaccines and everything set up. So I think the UK is going to be open before anything. Uh, for the touring wise but whenever yeah. Reading and Leeds whenever Reading and Leeds and all the those are open up I'm headlining there so I'm super pumped I'm, I'm wait, really excited about all cannot of it. wait honestly Jaden thank you so much for talking to us thank you for having me I appreciate it so much you have a great day alright alright all right. bye bye, bye. Bless you.